All right, so here's the situation. We have a couple of different options that we would like to review with you guys. It's a major life decision for us. So hear us out. We'd love to hear your thoughts, opinions, and uh, we'd love to get some input from you as far as what it is that we should do. channel you may just know us as the meat rabbit people we've been focusing a lot on meat rabbits but there's actually a lot more to us than that is there though i think is so there? i hope so i really hope there's more to us than meat rabbits um obviously we also garden and do all kinds of other things however our main focus in our personal lives is our transition over to north idaho we currently live in southwest washington we homestead one single acre and we bought 20 acres about, what, 18 months ago? In April of 2018, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we bought 18 uh, or 20 acres out there, and the whole plan was to make it, what, a seven-year plan and then transition over there. However, as we started spending time over there, it became a five-year plan, then a three-year plan, then a, this is where you guys come in. So hopefully you can help us out with this. All right, so we're gonna do the very taboo and forbidden thing, and we're actually gonna discuss our own personal finances. We're gonna give you a full breakdown of where it is that we currently find ourselves, where we hope to be at, and where that would hypothetically leave us. We got a bunch of notes that we've taken down ahead of time, so bear with us. We're gonna to toss and throw a whole bunch of numbers at you, but it'll kind of provide you with a little bit of clarity on why it is that we're so torn with these two options that we're currently mulling over. Right, and if you want to see our journey that kind of led us to where we are now, our current crossroads and how it was that we were able to purchase our property outright and do what we're doing, go ahead and check out that video. It explains a lot. Uh, we recorded that earlier in the summer, but uh, we're gonna be getting a little bit, we're gonna dive into this a little bit more. A few folks have kind of asked uh, us financial questions, so we're gonna hope to address all those questions. And again, if you ever have any questions or suggestions, leave them down below. So let's get into this. All right, so we've mentioned repeatedly previously on our channel and different videos um, and oftentimes in our lives that we are striving to live a completely debt-free life. Now with this property out in Idaho, we are building and putting in everything it is that we're going to need and paying for those projects utilizing cash. So that brings us to our current financial situation here in Washington. Here we have been paying off all of our debt. We've been um, following kind of the Dave Ramsey plan of finding everything with the highest interest rate and nailing that stuff first, trying to consolidate debt, things like that. Our only existing debt is a car payment, which is a big one. It's $25,000. So that, that and our mortgage are our only two pieces of debt. So we have an existing mortgage and our current property of $255,000. We bought at the very bottom of the market as a short sale. So the property that we live in now is valued at around $600,000. We're going to, depending on what time of year we sell, we're hoping to get at least 600 for that. Okay, so let's talk about our mortgage and if we were to sell our house. The equity in this house is what we're going to use to build our and fund our entire build over in Idaho debt-free. So we've got an existing mortgage of $255,000. We're hoping to sell for 600. We've got a buyer side commission. You always have to think about the commissions for the agent. Luckily, I am a real estate agent, so I will be listing our house and saving us um, anywhere from two and a half to three percent. So if we offer a buyer side commission of 2.25, which is about minimum, and I'm probably gonna offer minimum, that's $13,500 in buyer agent commissions. That is unavoidable. Uh, then you've got your excise tax and your title transfer fees. Those are, safely estimated at about 2% of the sales price. So you're looking at another, we're looking at another $12,000 in fees there. Plus our payoff of $255,000. That will leave us with $319,500. So we will walk here with that amount. So with paying off our mortgage, that balance would be wiped out. Now to go back for a second to the $25,000 balance that Melissa referenced, um, with regard to our vehicle, if and when I made the decision to resign from my job, 
I would be cashed out at that point and compensated for all of my vacation and comp time. The sum of money that I would receive from that would cover and eliminate in full that balance, that debt that we have for our car payment. Yeah, so if we sell this house and he quits his job, we'll be debt free and unemployed and homeless. So that brings us to no debt and about $320,000 in the bank. But it also leaves us with an issue of having no, no place to live. Nowhere to live. So the very first thing we thought of is we also need a place to store all of our stuff and our building supplies for when we start building our home over in Idaho. Mm -hmm. So we need a pole barn and we need to be pretty big. So before we start building a house, we're going to be building a pole barn. And that is something, uh, what's the size of that gonna be? 64 by 40 is what we're discussing right now. And that's what we have also received a quote for. Yes. And then the plan is to frame out and build an apartment in the back of that for our family to live in while we build our home. And then we'll have a place to store all of our furniture and everything, but that brings us to the cost of the house. The quote that we got for the, for pole, the, barn. For the pole barn, for the slab, the windows, the doors, the roof, all that put up because we need this already put up so that when we get there, we can start framing out the apartment because we're not gonna have time to spend the entire summer putting up a pole barn. And with just the two of us doing it, it would take the summer. So to pay to have it put up, it's we got our, our best quote was $58,000. So a lot of you folks are probably wondering, where's $58,000 coming from? That is something that we have been planning for all year. And so that's something that we have liquid cash for. So we will not be touching the $320,000. The pole barn is already paid for. But we will be framing out this apartment. What we're thinking about for the apartment, of course, we'll be showing you every step of the way as we do that. It's going to be 680 square feet. It's going to have two bedrooms in it. Uh, so we need to think about we're going to need three interior doors, one exterior door leading into the pole barn because the whole bathroom is going to be framed out separately. And we're going to need to put a wood stove in that and... A little tiny kitchen. <laughs> yeah, a little tiny kitchen area. And who knows how long we're going to be staying in this little living quarter. So um, we want to make it comfortable as possible. But at the same time, it's not something that we want to blow the budget on. Right. We don't want to pour a bunch of money into something that's temporary because we're going to um, not really have a lot of use for that space after the fact besides storage. And we need the money for our build. Additionally, we'll also have our camp trailer that we've been using on trips out there to, to stay in and utilize as well. And we'll be living in the camp trailer while we frame out the pole barn. And then, so we'll probably be pretty happy to get into that apartment, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure we'll get, be happy to get out of the apartment too. It'll, it'll get us going. So again, we still have not touched that sum of money that um, we got from selling our house and also paying off the car loan that we mentioned. Right, so that brings us to the fork in the road. We have option A and option B, and we're kind of standing at this crossroads and we don't know what the right answer is. Um, we've talked about it back and forth. Uh, both options seem good. Both options have pros and cons. So we're gonna run them by you and see what you guys think. So that brings us to the two options that we are currently mulling over. Option number one will require for us to list our house on the market, probably this coming spring, spring of 2020. If and when that sells, I would then resign from my job so we would not have any reliable income at that point. However, we would be debt free. Um, we would then move to Idaho. We would frame out the living space in our pole barn, which would be paid for using liquid cash that we already have. Um, and at that point, we would be starting our build. But maybe possibly not this summer, depending on how long the pole barn build out takes. And because once you start the build, we already have the foundation in, but once we start the build, it needs to be weathered in for the winter. So right. it's a, the next step is a big step and we need to be ready to complete at least the weathering in process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just something we'd have to do. 
So um, if we sell the spring and we move out there, we are weathering, uh, or we are wintering in the pole barn with our four children in 680 square feet, so. It's also head down and working for the entirety of the summer to make sure that we get done on time. Yes. And yeah, so I would say the pros are, um, we preserve our equity in this house. We have, you know, with housing markets, you never really know. Right now the market is strong. Um, we don't know what the market's gonna look like in 18 months if we wait until the following, you know, May 2021. So that's just a total unknown and a gamble. Uh, the other pro is that we're just out there doing what we want. Um, this, is, this is what we wanna do and, you know, precious time is ticking and we're just ready to go. So the cons are that there isn't a safe, secure, uh, with health benefits career lined up out there. It's a risk. It's a gamble. Yeah. Is is part of our hesitation with doing it, and it's part of the reason we haven't done it thus far. Option two. Option two is to put up the pole barn regardless this summer. So either way, the pole barn's going up this summer, and then spend the summer framing it out, do some other projects, just spend the summer out there, and then come back here in the fall. Yeah, that's going to leave us essentially cash broke at that point because we will not have the cash out equity no. that we would receive if we go through, follow through, and actually sell our house. Right. So cash broke, but with a very solid career and benefits. So, so we would come back to come, come back, come back here, to Washington. Come back, too. yeah, come back here and then work the winter, have everything set up, and then just know that we're going to sell May twenty twenty one and that gives us that year to pay off the truck and eliminate that debt and then just build up a little bit more nest egg. The drawback with that is that it's, it's a, there's a gamble that way as well. We don't know what's going to happen with the housing market, especially with it being an election, election year. We could lose all of the equity that we currently have in our home. Additionally, it would mean that we're putting off our dream for another year. Um, and kind of like we just said a second ago, you only live once. And to put off your dreams can be a very frustrating thing to have to do. All right, last part of this equation. Let's say we, we sell our house, I quit my job, we move out to Idaho. How do we then pay for our bills out in Idaho without that reliable income? What do we do to cover our life expenses? How does that work? Okay, so let's first talk about what our expenses would be. If we are debt free, we still have living expenses. So we have insurance, we have car insurance, property insurance, and life insurance. Uh, we have our property taxes out there, we have cell phone payments, and we have internet payments. We're going to need our internet because we are YouTubers and we hope to, um, it, we need to at least maintain what we have so far and hopefully grow by featuring our build. Uh, we have groceries for six people we're going to probably be cutting into our gardening and things like that because we're gonna be just starting out. We have a lot of soil buildup to do. Our orchard's gonna be a brand new baby orchard. So we're not gonna be getting the amount of food that we're used to getting. Um, we have gas. We are now gonna be living very far from town. Gasoline for vehicles. Yes. Yeah. Um, possibly a power bill if we decide to run power. Uh, we have estimated all of those bills safely around $1,500 a month, and then that leaves us with some kind of medical insurance. We do have four kids, and we are going to be building, which means power tools and things like that where you may need, and you know, climbing up on roofs and rafters and whatever. So there is a medical co-op that we're looking into that my sister uses that she really likes. So it's about $400 for a family. So um, then if we just put in an extra $100 um, unforeseen whatever costs we need minimum Bare just minimum. to cover bills like no going out to eat no buying new clothes nothing minimum two thousand dollars a month at the very least that's twenty four hundred dollars or twenty four thousand dollars a year so how and are we going to get twenty four thousand dollars a year and pay ourselves to build our house that's where you come in so uh youtube currently and for the past three months we've been bringing in about two thousand dollars a month off youtube which is huge and has actually kind of nudged us in the maybe you guys can do this so if our channel doesn't grow at all and we're just able to maintain what we have now we should be able to cover our bare minimum expenses we're surviving yes um so that is not cutting into the equity of the house because that's our build money. And there's still some utilities. Well, I guess there's power or solar. We're gonna to need to figure that out. So that still needs to be paid for. 
but a lot of the house projects are already paid for. We've already done the road, we've already done the foundation, and we've already done the well. Septic. Um, we've already done the septic, and these projects are paid for cash, done. So there's no debt on any of that. So right now we're just looking at the structure itself and then whatever power source. So we don't want to tap into that $320,000. We want to be able to be building without touching that for living expenses. So we're hoping that YouTube can carry us through, but if not, that get, that's where it gets kind of tricky. That's where that unknown is. I mean, you never know with something online. We're not naive in that. Yeah, it's unreliable and it fluctuates. Like, we know that that's not a guarantee. And then, so there's also a job opportunity that, that Jeremy's working for. If you watch our channel, you kind of know um, that's... Yeah, that's something that's also being taken into consideration. It's been, been a very slow process. Again, for those of you who follow us, you probably already know that I've been complaining about how long this process has taken. Um, but I also kind of like having the opportunity to try things out to see if we can make this happen and work on our own. That, that would be ideal for me and I think for Melissa as well. That's, yeah. that, that would be us living our dream. But if it doesn't work out, uh, you know, we trust, we honestly trust that God will uh, provide a path that is right for us. So if we get out there and maybe YouTube isn't that path, maybe, um, maybe we don't even know what that is yet. Maybe it's not even something we're considering, but so basically the crossroads is, do we just jump in and sell everything that we own in May and put that pole barn up and start living out of it and start our build and just start our lives out there? Yeah, we're putting this out there. We honestly would like your input. Right. And try not to be selfish about this. I'm sure everyone wants to be like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, this would be great to watch on YouTube. Put yourself in our shoes for a second. Try to be reasonable um, and consider the fact that, hey, we've got little ones that we're responsible for. Um, you know, we're trying to do what's right for our family. Okay, before we wrap things up here, let's review real quick. Option A, sell our house. Walk with a healthy chunk of... $320,000, no debt. Of equity. Um, pay off our vehicle using cash that I would get from resigning from my job. Um, and then rely on our $2,000 of YouTube. Hopeful yeah. YouTube. Hopeful Hope that YouTube, YouTube provides us with enough financially to hold ourselves over while we're out in Idaho living out of a full barn that is also going to be paid for using liquid cash that we already possess. Um, option two would be to build a pole barn, cover that cost again using cash. Don't sell our house, don't quit our job, stay here, work at least an additional year during which time we will continue to save money, squirrel away, um, and, and just, I don't even know why we, why we I don't, I mean, waiting really only just pushes us back another year, but really at the end of that year, we're in the same situation Both. that we're looking at now, unless like the customs job comes through. But other than that, we're pretty much in the same position, but it's just another year of working and saving. Um, we run the risk of the housing market collapsing on us. We could probably save another maybe $30,000 if he stays and works, but uh, the market can fluctuate so much. Like, let's say we lose $100,000 on our house. We've actually hurt ourselves by staying. So this is why we go back and forth. A lot of it's uncertainties at play, which is why it's so tough to make this decision. But do right. we stay or do we go? You tell us. Put it Let down us in the comments. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to us babble on about our decisions. So this has pretty much been all we've been talking about for months and we've decided to turn to you guys for some suggestions and advice and help. Uh, so stay tuned for our decision. We need to make that choice really, really soon. Please leave your suggestions. Um, anything you have to say, questions, clarification, anything you need in the comments, we would love to hear what you have to say. Thank you guys so much. We will see you next time. Bye.